our results of breaking distances for the Tesla Model 3, and an exclusive response from CEO Elon Musk, next on Talking Cars. Welcome to this episode of Talking Cars. I'm Jennifer Stockberger. I'm Jake Fisher. I'm Gabe Shanhar. So this week we're going to kind of depart from our normal format for a bit because we have some big news, our own news. We have completed testing of the Tesla Model 3. And it's not just the results of the testing that are news, but Tesla's reaction to that testing. Um, so I'm going to start with Jake. Kind of give us a synopsis of what we found on the car. Well, I mean, if you've been following the first look of the, <laughs> of the vehicle, I mean, there's obviously a lot of things the car does really well. Really it's, well, it, yeah. It's fun to drive. It's fast um, it, and obviously very efficient. Um, but uh, we were really surprised some of the major deficiencies of that, and most notably, the braking distance. So uh, right. uh, we recorded 152 feet distance from stopping from 60 miles per hour. Yeah. And that is really long. And I, I know 152 feet. That <laughs> may not mean anything. That may not mean anything. Put but that in perspective. In yeah. perspective, I mean, that's about 10 feet. No, it's actually about 20 feet longer than the average for the class. Right. It's longer than Ford F-150 that in our test. And it's really almost <laughs> up there with like heavy duty pickup trucks. So um, we were really surprised. And when we see a test result, something mm -hmm. like that, uh, we want to know, is it just something wrong with our car? So right. what we often do is we get a second sample. Now, look, if you were testing a dishwasher, you could buy another dishwasher. Right. Even if you were buying a Honda, you know, testing another Honda Accord, we could buy one of those. And we have done that in and the past. We've, we've gotten second cars we've gotten in second, the past. It's not so right. easy with a Tesla Model 3 right. with the, the waiting list and ordering it. So we were kind of, well, we, we thought we had an issue, but I think Gabe actually solved it for us. Right. Tell the story of, of how we got a second Model 3 to confirm our So uh, fortuitously, uh, one of the recent weekends, I ran into a, an acquaintance of mine in town mm -hmm. uh, where I live, and uh, we, uh, I saw the the guy with the Model 3. and uh, I, <laughs> Who you I, met before. You didn't approach yeah, us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, an acquaintance. Uh, right. And uh, a quick glance at the wheel and tire, I realized it's exactly like ours. Ah, and a uh, quick chat, uh, I gleaned how many miles on the car. I thought, oh, perfect. I, I told him, I might need to borrow your car for, <laughs> for a few days. Uh, and I explained to him, you know, we, we almost finished testing our own Model 3, and we found a few uh, inconsistencies. We mm -hmm. just want to make sure that we, our car isn't like a fluke. Right. I thought it was funny because we, we did meet him. He was really willing. He was very interested in the results and really willing to let us use his car. Yes. So, so he's, uh, he, he's uh, one of those Tesla fans, right. but uh, also uh, he's a Consumer Reports right. uh, member. He, he was and, interested uh, in the uh, science. He was, he was interested <laughs> in, in contributing uh, and, and being part of a bigger thing, and right. helping us out. Good. So the, so the other part that's inherent to our protocols. The second sample is what we do. The other thing we do is before we publish, um, we, we like to give manufacturers a, an opportunity to want to explain the results and certainly comment if they have any on our results. So that's really kind of the bigger second part of the story is, is reaching out to Tesla. Sure. So we reached out to Tesla. Um, we were going to talk about our results and try to figure out what results they were getting. Mm -hmm. um, and also give them opportunities to to react in the story that we initially put out. Um, so we talked about you know, uh, our results. And, and um, well, Elon Musk wound up tweeting a few things. Um, right. he, which, people, which you may have seen. Which right? you may have seen. I mean, he did mention that um, in terms of the braking, it, it appears that they were able to figure out what was going on. And it looked like there was some kind of a software issue, it seemed like, that they mm -hmm. may be able to actually update over, over the air. Uh, but anyways, last night I wound up getting on the phone with him. So um, <laughs> Jake was just talking with Elon Musk. On the I phone said, line. "Kids, be quiet. <laughs> you know, keep it down with the video games." Um, I think they were actually using a Tesla in one of their video games. But <laughs> but, I, uh, but yeah, we talked for um, almost an hour. Wow! And it was a very frank discussion about um, what we were seeing and what they were seeing, and uh, we got a lot of details about what was going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know. First of all, we talked about the braking issue. Um, it seems like they have seen it. They're they're trying to validate um, a change for it right now uh, that they would be able to push out over the air. Um, as and if they put out over the air, they could actually st lower those stopping distances. Wow. And I could say that if those stopping distances are down to where we expect to see them uh, around, you know, a normal car like right. stopping about distance, about 130 or so. Yeah, right. I mean this. It would raise the score enough to to recommend the vehicle. Um, it could be very competitive in its class. 
Uh, so that they're working on right now, as soon as they work that out, um, he said it could be as soon as this weekend. Wow. Wow, so really um, quick kind of response. We'll, we'll see. I mean, certainly they need to validate it. But um, as soon as we get the over-the-air update on our car, we'll retest and, uh, and see if it's effective. And it's important that we've had other CEOs here, I think. Yeah, have, Alan Mulally oh, right. was here from Ford. At, uh, Bob Lutz was ago. here, Bob flew Lutz. his helicopter into the facility. Right. So there's always been interest in our results. The reaction time and, and his personal interest, I think, is, is really great in this case in the reaction. Um, I think the other neat thing in this case is most people think when they think of braking, they think of only hardware and this idea right. of being able to update a braking system. ABS has software related. And yeah, but, but I mean, a take, 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 take that on face value. I right. mean, if, if you could over the air update your fleet of vehicles and have braking distances improved, I mean, that would absolutely be an industry first. Right. I mean, that's kind of amazing mm -hmm. on face value. Obviously, it hasn't happened yet. Um, but but that that is incredible. But the but the reason it's it's not crazy is because yeah, there's a lot of software that controls right. brakes. It's not just about the clamping force and the wheels locking up. Um, every vehicle that's on sale right now has anti-lock braking system. Right. And that is basically actively sensing whether or not that wheel is locking up. And depending on how that's programmed, can have a huge effect on the braking distance. So it seems like they have located something in that software right. that they potentially could update and, and that have. That isn't taking advantage of that peak right. grip. And, and I should say that when we looked at kind of our individual results of our brake test, yep. we were able to get a stop out of this car right. that was in that 130 feet range. It wasn't repeated, but what that says is the tires are good enough. The tires right. have the ability to make the stop. Right. The brake pads themselves have, have the, the clamping ability, force. But they're not consistent. It's, right, it's important to on. mention that our braking distance is a function of multiple stops and not just a single occurrence that is the shortest distance. Right, so that would explain. So other publications have tested this car and their braking distance is reported. Right. Braking distances are shorter. Right. And, and this is how, I mean, so, a, a lot of other publications kind of like, you know, pick the fastest zero to 60 right. or whatever. I mean, right. we don't do that. We're looking for repeatability. We're right. not competing with anyone. We're, we're in the business of telling the truth. Right. And, and, and then in terms of repeatability, the borrowed car operated the exact same, same thing. Way, it wasn't able to re right. repeat those that, that short stop. Right. So that kind of wraps up the braking piece, but there were other things in the Model 3 results that weren't stellar. Um, right. So the stiff ride, right. the elevated wind noise, and uh, the control system, which initially we thought, you know, it's a matter of a display, and it's, but it, it was almost like missing the point. Actually, uh, executing some tasks, common tasks you do every day, like um, micro adjustments of the mirrors or the air vents. You have to dive into that so screen. So it's important it's for people who haven't been in it. The Tesla Model 3 only has a screen, so right. pretty much all the operations go through the screen. So just, I just want to clarify that so people know you don't get all this adjustability. Right, so it has uh, one single screen and the whole uh, cabin is, and the dash is pretty bare. Right. Uh, the air vents, uh, for instance, uh, that is really distracting and right. takes a lot of time uh, with eyes off the road and hand off the wheel. But in a typical car, it would take just a second right. to, to reach it and do. So d in your conversation with you, did you address any of those other things? Yeah, I mean, he was remarkably candid about things. Um, I mean, honestly, he, he, he actually thanked us for wow. bringing <laughs> well, these <that's> things <laughs> uh, to his attention yep. and um, said that, you know, we're helping him make the car, the car better. Uh, great. Um, you know, ultimately, I think we're, we're all on the same side. We want better cars for consumers. Um, but he actually did share with me a lot of information uh, that really I have not seen reported. Um, it seems uh, pretty exclusive to, to us. Um, you know, again, you know, talking about the deficiencies, you know, there's, you know, controls, the, the ride, uh, wind noise, um, rear seat we talked about. Um, I don't think there's any over-the-air update for the rear seat room. <laughs> Although uh, we got rear heated seats over the air. Ah. That we did get, <laughs> but it's, it's not getting any bigger. Um, but yeah, so he talked about, first of all, some of the changes that they have made in the last couple of months on the car. So our car isn't really an early production. I mean, they started delivering cars in July of last year. Our car was built in January. January. Okay. Um, you know, and we got it in February and we went right into to testing it. But in the last couple of months, they have made some changes to the vehicle. So um, he had talked about in kind of the uh, the March, April time frame, they had changed, made changes to the glass to address wind noise. Uh, they had made changes to the suspension, um, the dampers or the, the shocks, Shock uh, basically, to address ride. Okay. Um, 
Now it had all, I've also seen and it's been reported that they had made changes to the springs uh, early on, the 2017 models, but our car should have those. To address ride comfort. To ride comfort, okay. yeah. So our car has the latest springs, but there's other changes. Um, so isn't there increased tire pressure too? Yeah, he also or, or I should say increased. Well, not the not tire so pressure. Much. So I mean, our car on on the door jam, uh, the car has 45, 45 psi is the tire pressure for for the tires, um, which is unusually high. That's which what I was is say. high, um, you know. And and Annie Elon, you know, explained is like, well, you know, to get the best range, that's how you do suspected, it. But, yeah, um, but certainly at lower tire pressures, you know, it was his opinion, and I, I, I agree. You'd probably give up a little bit of range, right. but you'd probably increase your 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 right, ride, right. and you'd probably also probably also increase your handling too. Probably improve a few things. Right. So um, maybe that was something break, we talked about. Breaking distances. <laughs> but I mean, as long as it's certified, and that's what it says on the door jam, I mean, that's what you that's, should. And that's what we're. Testing and that's what we're going to test right, too. Right. Um, but there was several things like that. Now, in terms of the controls, you know, I mean, he was really interested in see what he can do to do an over-the-air update to improve controls, and. Um, you know, it's very interesting because even our car has improved as it's sat here, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, originally, in order to adjust the speed on the cruise control, you had to go through the menus, and now you could do it on the steering wheel. Yeah, that was part of one of the over one the, of the air updates. updates. So it's clear that he's looking for other ways to improve this vehicle. Um, and we talked about the vents. Um, <laughs> you know, he talked about ideas of, well, maybe as you move the seat, it would automatically adjust the vents in the mirror oh, to suit a, you. A shorter person or a taller. Right, ah. exactly. So I mean, there's there's a lot of right. you know. I mean, this is one of the cool things about Tesla is that they could keep on kind of refining this vehicle, um, and certainly as they come up with updates, we want to keep our scores updated. So we will retest, and if it does something to improve it, we certainly will address it. One of the things that I highlighted to him which, again, we talked about in our story and we've written about, is this key, or lack thereof. <laughs> the key card. Yeah. <laughs> so when you have, right, so, so there's no actual physical key for, that comes with the Tesla Model 3. It's like a credit card kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and unless you have the app, it's well, a major inconvenience. Well, look, I mean, the app, the app works well. Right. Okay, I mean, I've, I've used the app and it knows I'm there and it, sets, it knows who I am and it sets everything. That works great. So it just senses my cell phone as I'm walking up and it unlocks. That's, that's fine. The problem comes is if you're giving the car to someone else. And not right. that you're, you're renting it to people, but it's like, what if you go to a, a valet right. or that's you go to a parking saying. garage? I live in the city and I got to go give it to the guy. I'm not sure if it's coming you're flying back. flying and leaving it at a parking, you know. Yeah. Right, exactly. So it has this little credit card, right? And you have to kind of figure out where to put it, right? And you have to like put it a certain location, and it's you know, it, it, it doesn't work well. And it's a very narrow location. It's a very <laughs> right. It doesn't have much of a range. Right, right. Um, and you know, he admitted that it's like, yeah, this isn't working too well, and we really should do something better. So, so it, I mean, again, I don't know if they're going to do it or not, but he he said, yeah, we really need to provide a normal key to yeah. those, to, to the customers of this car. Um, and I think that would help. That would help. I mean, you know, if you want to use the app, that's fine. Yeah. But, you know, if I'm someone who has to put it into a parking garage every once in a while and I don't want to, you know, leave a note trying to explain where right. to put the key card. And Place it's, card bo here. it's both for unlocking the car and for starting the car. Right. 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 It's two locations. So, yeah. so I mean, what, what's clear is that, you know, he's listening. Um, they're trying to make this car better. And, you know, we're going to do our part and just as the car changes, and we've done this with the Tesla Model, Model S, right? It's not just one test. Right. You keep on trying to update the test or the latest updates. We'll, we'll, we'll do our best to keep up. <laughs> right. And I think it's important. Some of the changes, the springs, the glass, that requires getting another That's car. That's hardware, yeah. That's hardware. So, so, you know, I suppose at some point we'll buy another Model 3. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, certainly we want to tell our you know, to tell our members right. and tell everyone, you know, the latest. So um, I, we will rent a vehicle from them. I, I, I want to experience the latest updates. Right. And so we could certainly talk about them. Um, we'll have to obviously have to think about it because I don't want to, we're not going to do any testing on that borrowed vehicle. Right. right. So a lot to do and, and, and certainly there will be follow-ups. Truly, I, I mean, from, from just watching it unfold, it's a consumer win. If, if Tesla follows through with all that you talked to, mm -hmm. to Elon Musk on the phone about, it's a consumer win. Our results, driving change quickly. Mm -hmm. And Model 3 owners, potentially as late as, as early as this weekend, will have a better car 
than they had before. And we couldn't ask for better than that. So as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.